What's up? This is Justin, Bluster Dog Tutorials, and this is going to be the first episode in probably a very long series in which we replicate an Elden Ring or Soulsborne style game in Unreal Engine 5. As a bit of a disclaimer, I want you to know that I am not an expert. Don't take everything I say as final or the right way to do things. I'm just showing you how I learned how to do things, and anything could change as we progress. Additionally, I'm going to try to make these videos a little bit shorter than before so they're easier to digest. So, to kick things off, create a third person project for Unreal Engine 5. Make sure you have C enabled. And then there's a link in the description for a free weapon pack. So, go ahead and download that and add that to your project. So, the first thing I think I'm going to do is add a folder that I'm going to call Rune Retriever which is just the name of the project that I'm operating in. And this is going to be the folder that contains all of the information that I really want. So let's add something to that folder real quick. If you go to Characters, Mannequins, Animations, and you'll find this animation blueprint for Manny. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm gonna call it ABP underscore Rune Player. And I'm gonna take that and move it over to my new folder. And then next thing I'm going to do is head over to the characters folder and then mannequins and then the meshes folder. And you'll see that the SK mannequin skeleton is right here. And that's what all of the characters, the Manny and Quinn characters are based on. So I'll open that up. And then we can add those sockets in the hands so that we can add a sword and shield. So if we look for the hand up here in the search, you can see there's hand L and hand R, and then you just right click both of these and we'll add a socket. And we'll rename that socket to be left hand socket. And then for the right, same thing, add a socket, rename it, right hand socket. And then we can go ahead and actually right click these and add a preview asset. And for the right hand, we'll look for the sword which is right here. And then for the left hand, we will add another preview asset and look for the shield. So um, immediately you'll notice that th they're reversed. So if you select the sockets, we can just rotate them. And then you select the other one, rotate that so that the hand is actually holding the handle there. So if we just do 180, should be good. And then we can move. If you uncheck the snapping, it'll be a little better. We're just trying to move it into the hand so it kind of makes sense. And then you can also rotate, turn off the snapping for that too. And that looks fine for the shield, at least for now. And then for the right hand I think that should work for us right now so then you can go ahead and save that next I created a blueprints folder inside my rune retriever folder and in that blueprints folder I created another folder called equipment and inside the equipment folder I'm going to create an actor blueprint called BP underscore equipment so I'll just open that up real quick, and up at the top I'll add a component of the type Skeletal Mesh. And that way anything that inherits from this will have the Skeletal Mesh and I can just swap it out. So if you right click the Equipment Blueprint, you hit Create Child Blueprint Class, we'll name this BP underscore Greatsword. And while we're at it, we can right click the Equipment again, create another Child Blueprint Class, and name this one BP underscore shield. Now we can just open the great sword blueprint, select the skeletal mesh, and then over on the right, we can select the sword itself as the mesh. Once that's done, we can head over to the shield and do the same thing. Next, let's open the third person character blueprint and we're going to add a new function. And we're going to call this add equipment. 
in the add equipment function, we're going to add two input parameters. The first one will be of the type name. And the second one will be a class reference to the equipment blueprint we made earlier. We'll just name the first one socket name. And then the second one will just be called equipment. So first we'll drag in the mesh of the character because from that we're going to look for a node called get socket transform. We're going to use this transform node to get the location of the socket so we know where to spawn the equipment. So make sure you hook up the socket name to the in socket name input. And then we're going to drag out from add equipment and add a spawn actor from class node. Then make sure you hook up the return value of the get socket transform into the spawn transform. Hook up the equipment class reference to the class input. And then from spawn actor, we're going to attach actor to component. And this is what we use to actually attach the actor or the equipment actor to the socket. So make sure you hook up the mesh to the parent input so we know where the equipment will be socketed to. And then the socket name should go into the socket name. And lastly, we want to select snap to target for each of these dropdowns. And one last thing to do is to make sure that the return value of the spawn actor is hooked up to the target input of the attach actor to component node. Now, if we switch back to the event graph, we can drag in the add equipment um, function. And we're going to drag in two of these for um, event begin play. So you can just duplicate it. And for the first one, we'll just select the great sword, and the second one will select the shield. And then for the socket name for the great sword, we want to say right hand socket. And then for the shield, we'll say left hand socket. Now, if we were to compile and save and test this out, we can see that now the character is holding the sword and shield and it is moving around with the player. So in the description of this video, there is a link to a zip file that contains four animations that I created in Unreal kind of quickly, so they're not super high quality or anything. But if we open up the hold greatsword animation, you'll see the character is kind of holding the greatsword on their shoulder, but it probably won't be lined up perfectly because we just need to rotate and move around that socket in order for it to line up. But we can fix that in a second. Um, some of the other animations I made were first the holding the great sword, but also I made the block shield. So it's just the left arm kind of holding the shield up in a block. And then I made a dive roll, which was kind of intensive to make, but it works. And then a simple swing of a sword. And we're just going to use these as placeholders. And you can really kind of use whatever animations you want. Um, this is just for logic, though. So let's fix the sword um, in the hold great sword animation. So all I'm really going to do is kind of swap back and forth between the skeleton file and the animation of holding the great sword to kind of tweak it and see how it looks in the animation. So it appears to be um, kind of going through the hand. So I'm going to keep kind of rotating it so that it kind of just fits where the hand is holding it. And again, this really does not need to be perfect. It's just at a glance, it kind of doesn't need to look weird. So not looking weird, that's the goal. And that is a goal I live by on a daily basis. All right, I think for my purposes, that looks good. Um, so I think we can move on. So let's open the animation blueprint for the rune player. And you'll see a window that looks like this, which is the event graph. But we're not going to mess with this right now. What we want to open is the anim graph down here. So if you double click that, we'll see a graph that looks like this. And what we'll want to do here is we'll unhook the output pose. We'll just move that over here. And then the default slot, we want to keep this because this is where you add animations. But we're not going to actually use this up here. We'll just move that down here. 
So what we have here is the locomotion that goes to the locomotion pose. And then we have main states, which will not, it doesn't go to anything right now, but what we want to do is cache a new saved cached pose, right? Because we want to use this later. So we're going to call this standard pose. And now we can use the standard pose anywhere we want. So I'm going to use it right here, and then I'm going to hook it up to the control rig. And then from the rig, I'm going to create another cache, and I'm going to call this one rig. This is just a way for us to use specific uh, poses before or after certain events, like a control rig, um, or like right after the main state, state machine, we want to save that, and etc. So we can use these, like the rig or the standard pose, anywhere we want. So I'm going to, for instance, use the standard pose right here. Use cached pose, standard pose. And we're going to use a node called a layered blend per bone. And what this does is it takes one pose and it takes a second pose and blends between them a certain percentage. So one would be 100%. What we want to do is take this animation, hold greatsword that we imp imported if we can find where that is so right here at the bottom you just drag that in and connect it to blend poses zero so basically what we're doing now is we're blending the standard pose with the anim hold greatsword which the anim hold greatsword is just the character holding using his right arm to hold this greatsword on his shoulder so if we were to connect this to the output and compile it you'd see that nothing changes. The character is still the same, nothing's happening. Well, if you select the layered blend per bone, we can specify which bone specifically we want to apply this to. So if we were to, over here on the right, look for the layer setup, and we have one member here, it's under index, we have zero elements. So why don't we add one and have that drop down, and we have a place here that we can enter the bone name. So if we were wanting to affect only the right arm of the character, we can quickly go over and open up the skeleton, which is right here. And we'll look at some of these bone names here. So we have, it's the right hand, right? So we have clavicle R, which is if you move it, you can see it's the right arm. I'm just gonna undo that. We have the upper arm, which is another, it's a little bit lower in the arm, but that moves that. So if we were to select, you know, upper arm, it would take all of the data from the hold great sword and apply from the upper arm down. So if you look at the tree, anything below upper arm would be affected. So I'm gonna undo that real quick. But I don't want it to be upper arm. I want it to be clavicle R. So let's, why don't we just right click and copy selected bone names, head back over to the animation blueprint, select this again, and paste what we copied. And now, if we were to compile, you'd see that it only takes the animation from the target, this hold greatsword and it only selects specifically where we say in the tree. So if we were to compile and save, and then head over to our third-person character blueprint, select the mesh, and search for animation on the side. Over here in animation class, we want to select this drop-down and select our new ABP underscore rune player. Now, when we hit play, we have our new animation, the character is holding the great sword over their shoulder. So now that we have a good base or a good starting point, we can, in the next video, kind of implement all of the rest of the animations and add some input and get this character more fleshed out. So if you liked the video, please hit like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.